Okay, well hello and welcome to this Facebook Live. It's Andrew and Claire again um, and we'd like you to, to please add any comments that you've got in the box below and we'll answer them as we go or come back to them later if we haven't seen them. Um, if you don't know us already, we are two thirds of the admin of this group with uh, John, John Richardson. Am I in? Am I in? John Richardson. Um, and um, we are authors, which I'm sure you already know, of the, uh, the Daily Grind, how to open and run a coffee shop that makes money. Um, we've decided today to do um, uh, this Facebook Live on um, COVID-19, or as we all know it, coronavirus because it seems to be the biggest issue that everybody is talking about. Um, we were in London actually yesterday yeah. with a client uh, and in all intents and purposes you wouldn't have known there was any issue with um, COVID-19. Um, everyone was going along their daily business, the coffee shops were full, but that's not the same everywhere and it's not going to be the same as time goes on. Uh, for example, I went um, to, to visit a, a large hospital where we were um, in, in this country, in the UK, and um, I went there on Wednesday. And as you walk in, there's, there's lots of pods being built, um, ready for um, infected people to go to. But as I walked through the main entrance, I actually walked 30 metres before I came to a sanitizer point. And when I got to the sanitizer point, it was empty. Um, there were other subject points I could go to, but it's just uh, an observation that I made um, that this shouldn't have been empty. And um, I, I spoke to a member of staff who uh, apologised, obviously, and said, oh, the sanitizer is on order. So this is a great uh, example of you being ahead of the curve and making sure your cupboards are all stocked up with the essentials. Um, I mean, our sympathies go out to everybody who is affected by the aftermath of this virus and it's something that will affect all of us in one way or another in the coming weeks. Um, so unless you've been un hiding under a stone and haven't heard anything about it, it's going to affect all of us. So we've all got to be proactive on, on how we um, act to this virus. Um, do you want to go on to the... Yeah, well, I, I know we met up with uh, one of our old uh, adversaries, really. He was a competitor of ours in Oxford um, when we were at the Cash and Carry this week. And uh, he said, you know, he was down 30% uh, based on last year. Uh, obviously, Oxford is a very touristy town. Um, a lot of Chinese, a lot of uh, American tourists and people from all over the world are there. And he, he reckons he's 30 percent down already. And there hasn't been any impact uh, yet or any sort of recorded coronavirus. Uh, impact in Oxfordshire yet. Um, there's been a few comments on this thread since we put the thing out yesterday. Uh, was it Michael Kennedy from the US said, you know, he's already noticed a, a, a downturn in business, but Trevor Little uh, from the UK said all oh, is good. And I think it is, it is quite a local sort of um, impact, uh, but ultimately, if you look at the way it's going across the world, it will affect you. And I know a lot of people are worried. Uh, we've had a We've had a client this morning cancel a visit because uh, their trade is down based on that. I think, you know, people will, are, are worried about it, um, are thinking about staying away from uh, places where they're likely to come into contact with other people, and coffee shops are that type of place. So there is going to be an impact on us. Uh, so, but as I say, at the moment, it's, it's, um, it's quite, quite localised. Uh, so some parts of the country haven't really noticed uh, any impact yet. Um, but I think ultimately, you know, whether you're big, small, you've got one site uh, or multiple sites, I think ultimately you will. And if you look at the impact of Starbucks in the, in China, their sales have gone down by 78%, which is not surprising really when you think of it because they've closed um, a lot of their shops. And don't forget, if you've got any more comments, we're going to talk a little bit about the COVID um, at the beginning of this video. If you've got any more comments uh, that you'd like us to ask, ask us anything about, um, in the spirit of the, uh, the Facebook Live, please ask us those questions. Yeah. So, we've been having a think around, you know, what what we can do to prepare ourselves um, for, you know, if, uh, and what you can prepare yourself for uh, if you've got a coffee business at the moment, or even if you're thinking about opening one. Mm. So, so we, we, were, we were brainstorming about um, 
the people who are pre-open, pre-opening, and um, what lessons, what lessons you can learn from from listening to everything that's going on. Um, I mean, I I keep saying, and I'm sure you've heard me say this before, um, is about the contingency fund that you've got to keep back. Now we always say 20 to 30 percent of your budgets keep back for a contingency plan. This is an example of a contingency plan. This is something outside your control that you have to deal with. Um, so be prepared. This this will this will highlight and be in the forefront of your mind after all this COVID-19 disappears. Uh, but your contingency plan is vital, whether it's, it's COVID-19, whether it's roadworks, whether it's your staff walking out, whether it, things outside your control. So please remember your contingency plan. And, um, and also keeping your, your monthly costs, your fixed costs down to a minimum, uh, making sure your rent is below uh, 10%. Uh, and don't forget your power, your electricity. Uh, I mean, I've written in the book about the, the mistake I made not making the contracts and changing contracts regularly um, to get the best deals so that you pay as little as possible uh, to the big energy suppliers. Uh, and also the flexible workforce. I mean, yes, you've got to think of it about the flexibility when people go off um, sick uh, and things. You've got to have a flexible workforce that can cover their colleagues. And if you've got that right environment, um, that it's a team, um, people will cover their colleagues, if they know that when they've got a problem, their colleagues will cover them. Um, and um, really watch those monthly bills like a hawk. Um, look out for all the, the credits that you've been missed and, uh, and all the rest of it. So really, really be on it, really carefully and, and spot the, where you're losing uh, the initiative and where you're losing the, the, the vital money slipping through your fingers that you can control. And also, um, we were saying about um, building up relationships. Now, yeah. this is an ideal time to build up relationships. Well, actually, you know, this is the time that your relationships come to the fore. It's not building exactly. up now. You need to build yeah. them up before exactly. then, but exactly. you know, all your suppliers. Yeah. Because because we found that in our own, uh, I'm sure you've read in the book, uh, our own experience, that that builds up a relationship. When you've got a problem, it comes to, to the forefront and they will help you. Things like paying um, on time, um, talking to your contact at your suppliers, managing your cash flow, and we talk about cash flow forecasters. Uh, it comes into its own uh, on situations like this. Really budget and plan ahead. Don't bury your head in the sand. Plan for the movement of money that's in and out of your. Yeah. Your don't, don't wait until you've got a problem, and don't. If you have a situation at the moment, if you've got a current business at the moment, mm. if you have got a problem at the moment, you will see that there's going to you've got a downturn in sales. Don't wait until. 28 days after the due date of your bill to ring up the supplier, yeah. ring them up in advance and say, listen, we're all in the same boat here, we've got this problem, I've been a great client for the, of yours for the last how many years, months or whatever, you know, we've got a bit of a cash flow crisis at the moment, do you mind extending me a little bit yeah. extra credit, guarantee I'll pay you later on, but you know, can you give me a yeah. bit of slack? So that's what we talked about, the, um, the relationships. If you've got that point of contact that you can talk to them and they know you and, and you can explain the, the situation that you're in and ask for rent delays, ask for overdrafts, all the things that can keep you afloat and get you through this difficult, difficult time. Other things like um, insurance. Um, we've spoken to lots of people with the, the floods that had happened when we spoke to them the, the last Facebook Live um, and people hadn't read their insurance uh, policies properly and they weren't insured for floods. So they, they, they've lost everything and, and they can't claim it back. So look at your insurance policy, make sure you get the right insurance policy, make sure you're covered for business interruption because it's going to happen with this, this uh, virus. Uh, you are going to have downturn in business uh, and you need to have the insurance in place and your insurance is only as good as, as when you need to claim for it. Don't just think of the cheapest, because the cheapest might not be the best. Look for the best no. policy. Look at the actual, read the policy yeah. and so make sure is, you're actually covered. So these are all things that's all the pre-opening. If you're in the pre-opening phase mm -hmm. now, these are the lessons that you know you can mm -hmm. you can learn from it. You know, don't skimp on it. Um, you know, we've had people drive through the front door of our, <laughs> our um, shop. We had the first drive through. Yeah, we had one of the first drive throughs in Oxford, but you know, luckily we had um, you know a whole uh, pretty much a whole week without trade mm -hmm. because we had to take the car out and put the put the you know put the place back together. But our business interruption insurance 
put right. this out. So yeah, these so are the sort of things now you, you, you need to you know build mm -hmm. up as I said the contingency fund we, we talk about all the time. Mm -hmm. Make sure you've got enough of their money. You know, it's probably you know a good two months profit sat in the bank yeah. somewhere in a in a in a in a rainy day fund because mm -hmm. you know if you are in a, a an area that you've had floods two two times on the trot and now you've got the uh, coronavirus mm -hmm. looming then you know it, it 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 will definitely take a toll on your uh, profitability and your sanity definitely definitely so so is there any ways you can mitigate um so if you've got a coffee shop at the moment you know what we've been thinking of the ways of what we you know we've done we've done in the past in the crisis i think the pro most important thing is to have a plan so you know and hi brenda thanks for your comment <laughs> um so yeah have a plan um have a team meeting mm. if you haven't had one yet sit down with everyone go through with everyone what, what your plans are how they need to deal with it you know what what um how they're going to talk to customers mm. make sure they're clear on what your strategy is yeah. for um dealing with because the, the one thing we, we should say is Get the right information because there's so much fake news yeah, out there, yeah, yeah. and so much you know high, in the papers, in the press, so much fake news frightening people. So make sure you get the right information from the right source, your government sources, your local government sources. But make sure that your your team are aware of the the fake news as well, so that they can talk in a in a in an informed way to the customers, so that they give the right information. That's yeah. really important. So yeah, and make sure they're on message. So you know, you have a plan. Things like planning for sickness. So if you unluckily get a member of staff that's going to be in self isolation, mm -hmm. then you know how. What do you want them to do? Probably the last thing you want them to do is come into work. In truth, but you know, you need to have a plan to manage that. Um, things like reducing the menu, having a reduced menu plan, so that if you are under stress, you know, you can make, carry on making coffee if your heart's content. Mm -hmm. But you, you know, reduce your level of food offer. Have a plan. Have a have a have a have a, a plan B for that so that your uh, the stuff you make doesn't take quite as long or you can make it on demand. That's one thing that's, that's you know, like, like you had a bad, uh, like you do that anyway if somebody didn't turn, turn up one day or that you had an issue with a supplier not coming in, you know, reduce many. And the customers will understand that. Mm. Um, perhaps look at changing your opening hours as well uh, to mitigate it. If, it. if your sales are down, then you need to keep your staff costs down as much as possible. But I understand that people have got to pay their pay their pay their rent, pay their mortgages, pay their loans. Um, so you've got to, you know you've got a responsibility as the owner, as the as the boss, um, to look after your team uh, in these times of crisis. So it's no good telling them would well, well come back when Corona's finished, um, <laughs> and um, they'll all end up in jail or, or on default on their loans. That's not that's not going to be no. good for long term for anything. So and you want to have the loyalty of yeah. your team as well. So look at what the industry are doing as well. So Starbucks, for instance, have made, have stated today that they're no longer going to use uh, uh, refill customers' cups. And so, also, they said on the on the big news in this country today that they weren't going to use ceramic cups anymore. They were going to go over to takeaway cups. Did they? I missed that. Yeah, on the BBC um, website. Today. Okay. Well, that's well, that, yeah. That, well, that obviously it goes slightly against the uh, the carbon footprint <laughs> stuff, but means must. Um, we think there's an opportunity to sort of advertise um, that you can uh, be mm. the. Um, be the hand wash station in your local area. Mm. So if you look at Lush uh, in the UK, Lush are a, um, a group of uh, cosmetic, uh, cosmetic company on the high street. And they've got big signs on the window, wash your hands here. So I think opportunity there is to get people to come in uh, for the very first time um, to, to wash their hands, by their hands. Look at increasing your, your cleaning regime as well. So, you know, you, you probably do it automatically, but make sure they're using the right chemicals. Mm. Uh, you know, there are um, different quality of chemicals for uh, kill time. So you've got 30 second kill time, one minute kill time, five minute kill time. Make sure you're using the right chemicals for the right pro uh, for the right area and use the strongest ones that you can, I would suggest. Nice cleaning class. Have two weeks um, stock of this stuff as well. So it's no good, you know, you only were in a, that we were in the cash and carry. There wasn't any issues in the cash and carry, but I understand there's quite a bit, there's a lot of empty shelves mm -hmm. um, in in the big supermarkets, uh, uh, particularly in the UK, um, and you see things in Australia and just in toilet rolls <laughs> and stuff like that, people wrapped up in toilet rolls, so you know, you want to uh, be aware of that as well. So, you know, look at getting two weeks worth of, um, mm. of, of supplies there. And also, um, make sure you, 
you're, you're seen to be doing all of this. It's, it's great and it's really important to be doing it, but make sure your team see that you're you're proactive and make sure your customers see you're proactive yeah. with the sanitizer, have a sanitizer by the door yeah. uh, and so that it shows that you're taking everything really seriously and you're following all the government. Yeah, if you can if you can get hold of this gel, um, if you can, <laughs> you can. I would definitely consider putting one by the front door uh, with a sign saying, please wash your hands or, you know, feel free to wash your hands at the sanitizer as well as the site next side inviting new customers in yeah. to wash their hands. But above all, you need to be the leader. This is where you've got to step up now. The people are looking to you for leadership in this. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a real, you know, you need to make some some decisions. You need to be strong, you need to be clear, you need to communicate. I think the government in the UK have done a relatively good job in terms of communicating to mm -hmm. the public. Um, and you as a leader in your coffee shop need to think about doing the same sort of things really. You need to uh, help them, mm. your team understand that so they are on message. And you've got to wash your hands regularly. You've got to do the, 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 everything. If you do it, it cascades down to your team. Because if you don't do it, they're going to think, oh, I'm not going to bother doing it either. Um, so lead rather than um, miss out on an opportunity to keep uh, your business as safe as you possibly can. So, have you finished with that one? Yeah, I'm just yeah. checking the so, any messages. So, okay, so I'm going to look at um, opportunity. Well, I think I may have. I think I may have just used. You just, you just actually, <laughs> you stole, you stole my opportunity. Yeah, stole my opportunity. Yes, you stole my opportunity. We, we was, I was going to say about uh, inviting people to wash their hands and the examples of Lush, which you've already seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but um, you know, say that again. So that's, that's quite a good marketing <laughs> plan. So there are many great things you can do in this crisis, but that's, that, I think that's one clever way yes. of getting and it the was very clever the because um, Lush actually made the headlines in this country um, by doing something very very simple being proactive to come on in and wash your hands but once people came over the, the, the door the doorstep they were more likely to buy something or had faith in that business um, doing things the right way um, we've also said about um, giving discounts to things uh, if you don't al already think about that it's, it's something that's really important is to advertise that you give discounts to uh, the emergency services, to nurses, doctors, anyone who works in the health service, anyone who works in the armed forces. Anyone um, that's going to be under stress, you know, carers, um, you know, there's going to be an awful lot of people under a lot of pressure mm -hmm. and uh, spreading a bit of goodwill in your local yeah. um, uh, a local community is uh, a real good, op it's a good time to yeah. do it now. So that you then become the go-to for, for those people and then when all this is left, they'll still come up. Build up your relationship, you use the opportunity to build up relationships and get the new, the new clients in. And also, um, we, we talked about the rent. Yeah. I mean, if you're already open, still ask uh, your landlord for help. We already said delay payments, but ask for a rent reduction. Say you're, you're struggling and, and ask. If you don't ask in this world, you don't get. Uh, and all, the worst thing about that scenario is they can say no. Yeah, that's the worst thing uh, we'll say. But no. You'll be surprised that they want you to succeed. Yeah. They don't want you to fail and have an empty unit. They want you to succeed. And building that relationship with them will pay dividends in, in times like this. Yeah, and if you haven't, if you haven't signed your lease yet, mm. then you know it's a good time to negotiate because there's that concern. Uh, there's a concern on the high street anyway of you know empty units. We were in London yesterday uh, looking at you know looking at potential sites for a client, mm. and um, you know the, the, there's a definite nervousness uh, with landlords at the moment, uh, mm. particularly with the sort of particularly there's there's a lot of shopping centres that are struggling as well. Um, so in a minute, I think with the, the, all these things combined, I think landlords are looking for tenants, mm. and they are quite they are never they have never been so flexible on their rent mm. so you never pay the, the sticker price on your on the rent it's just like buying a house isn't it yeah. you never pay the, yeah. the, the you wouldn't, price you wouldn't consider you negotiate. It. yeah you wouldn't consider uh, but it. if you negotiate in, in, in the right way it, it can work in your in your yeah way, so you know unfortunately covid 19 has given us that given you that slightly bigger bargaining chip there mm. so you know don't so, don't lose it you so won't use it, it. Yeah, that's, that's the important bit. Um, I was going to go on and talk about the London Coffee that's Festival. That's it, yeah. So. so we are still planning to, to, uh, for the London Coffee Festival uh, at the beginning of April in Brick Lane in London, the 2nd of April for four days. And we are still planning, we're still getting uh, everything printed and organised. And in fact, we, we had an email yesterday from the yeah. organisers that said it's still going ahead. Watch this space. Um, who knows? 
uh, the government may may in this country may say no no large gatherings and they may they may postpone it but you've still got a plan as if it's going to happen uh, and so we're, we're getting organized so if you if it fingers crossed it goes ahead um if you come in please come and see us we've got our, our stand our co2 co2 um, please come and say hello to us and have a chat so that we can put the face to the name uh, and, uh, and have a chat and tell us how, how are you getting on. Um, so uh, we'll be there for the four days. Yeah, and um, just a message about the Start Up the Coffee Shop, group, uh, Start Up the Coffee Shop uh, course online. Um, there's never been, there's been a lot of, you know, you may have known, you may have missed some good news for independence with everything that's going on. Uh, in the press recently, but there's been a lot of research uh, published recently uh, by Allegra and by today Mintel saying the the growth of coffee shops is still going strong, uh, depending on what stat you look at. You know, independent coffee shops have grown by seven percent in the last five years, or mm. or fifteen hundred percent in the last five yeah. years. So fundamentally, there's never been a better time to open a coffee shop. Um, perhaps not. To run it, to run one at the moment during this short period of time with this with this crisis, mm -hmm. uh, but whether you know whether, whether it's COVID nineteen, whether it's flooding, whether it's roadworks outside of this shop, whether it's you know a big uh, Debenhams closing opposite, you know mm -hmm. you got to you got to come up against these crises in your business at any stage. So you know this is just another one of those things. It's a short term blip really, which you need to really prepare for. And the issue, I suppose, is that you know. There, there are so many things there that we, you can uh, that you can get you can trip up on, and that's what the start of a coffee shop uh, online uh, will help you with. Will stop you making mm. those uh, silly silly mistakes. Uh, not only silly but costly. Mistakes. Well, yeah, silly, costly, mm. um, and there's only so much you can get for free. Mm. Um, and the value of our course is uh, is phenomenal. It's you know it is the best course uh, out there for opening a new coffee shop. You know it comes everything. Uh, from your location to how to build a menu to mm. what size of plate you need to use, all the little details. It'll help you predict the sales and profit of, of a site even before you've opened it to compare different uh, different units. It'll help you produce the best ever business plan you never ever wanted. If you know if the if the bank wanted it or if you wanted a partner partner who wanted a business plan. It's full of resources, full of templates, and it takes out the stress, it takes out the guesswork. Mm. So, you know, on top of that, it comes with a Facebook group that we personally yeah. uh, and John answer every single question, and the feedback we get from that is brilliant, um, from the, the sort of the, the detail, because, mm. you know, in this is a free group, we can't go into every last detail of the, of the sort of nearly, we're up to nearly a thousand members in this group, by the way, which is great, uh, but in the start of the coffee shop, a uh, private Facebook group that you get membership to, mm. we answer every single question in absolute yeah. detail uh, uh, and we'll name it. And, you know, it's a bit of a no-brainer really. Um, just one thing, we were looking at the course the other week and there's just there's one thing in there will save you the value of the course. You know, the course is 299 plus fact. Um, but there's there's one piece of doc, there's one document, or just one tiny bit of documentation we put in there, one a, a matrix that'll take you through exactly what sort of equipment and how many plates, mm. how many sources, how many cups, how many of this, how many of that you need, depending on how many seats mm. you've got. And just that one mm. piece of uh, uh, information that we put together will save you the value mm. of the course, you know, almost immediately. Yes. Um, and of course, there's a, there's a money back guarantee. So if you sign up, you don't like it, uh, it's not for you. Um, you know, you don't like the look of us, or you don't like what we say, or you don't, you think we're all completely off, or completely wrong. Then yes, there's a money back, completely game out, money back guarantee. Yeah. So it's, a, it's, it is really a no-brainer. Yeah. Um, so if you, so if you need to, if you want to find out more, go to. Uh, we will put the link in the bottom of the comments in a second. It's go to startupcoffeeshop.com mm -hmm. and uh, sign up today and. We look forward to answering all those questions that you have about uh, opening your coffee shop and making your coffee mm -hmm. shop a success in the future. So, yeah, thanks thank very you. much.